Ewain seeks your aid in assisting an old friend. Ah, I dare say you might just be the right man for the job. The guild has urgent need of a capable lancer for a mission beyond our nation's borders. Hear me out, if you will. I've received word from an Ishgardian friend to the effect that he requires our aid. I would have you go and provide that aid. As you or may already know, due to her ongoing conflict with the dragons, Ishgard has kept her gates closed to outsiders for some time. The occasional dragoon on patrol duty is about all folks see these days. In spite of her self-imposed isolation, however, the Holy See has never failed to honor her obligations to her allies. It is only fitting that we answer the call and lend what assistance we can. To this end, we've offered to dispatch a contingent of wood whalers with all haste, but were politely informed that they would not be welcome, much to our initial confusion. It was later explained that we were dealing with a matter of some sensitivity best handled by individuals who are capable and trustworthy, yet unbound by allegiance. And who better, who fits that description save adventurers? Secrecy being paramount, I can provide no details on the nature of the task. All you need to know will be revealed at the rendezvous point. Should you accept this, the mission, take yourself to the observatorium. A knight by the name of uh, Sir Elbrick will receive you upon arrival. Yeah. There we go. Did the thing. Ah, you must be the adventurer of whom Wayne sent word. Greetings and well met. I am Sir Alabric Bale, Knight of Ishgard. The Holy See is much obliged to you, to you for your aid. Time being of the essence, I shall proceed straight to the heart of the matter. The Eye, an Ishgardian relic of immeasurable worth, has been stolen, and we have reason to believe the culprit has come this way. So it is that we ask your assistance in its recovery. The thief has been identified as a man named Estinian, a dragoon sworn to the service of the Holy See. Aye, you heard true. The crime was per per perpetuated by one of our own, an individual in a position of trust and no little honor. You may be assured that a wor fate worse than death awaits him upon capture. My duties to the sea afford me little opportunity to travel far beyond the walls of Ishgard. I must confess to a grave ignorance of recent Gridanian affairs. I was told by a sentry by the name of Logdanril I have knowledge of routes off taken by Ishgardian fugitives. I would prefer to keep my identity a secret, and thus would have you gather what information you can from the man. You must act quickly, for you see, Stidian is... But I have already said too much. What matters is that we find our thief in the eye with all haste. When last sighted, Estinian was clad in black armor. Now go, and speak not a word of what I have told you to anyone. I guess I didn't have far to go, but whatever. Routes favored by Ishgardian fugitives. Now that's a question. Why am I speaking like a pirate? <laughs> Let me try that again. Routes favored by Ishgardian fugitives. Now that's a question I don't hear every day. You aren't plotting some unsavory act for yourself, are you? 
Even if you were, I doubt you'd make it far. Any road, we've caught a few fleeing fr to the North Shroud. What in Gridania, being home to nearly as many Ellison as this guard, it is no easy task to identify outsiders. If you're on the hunt for someone, you could do worse than to visit Florentil's spire in the North Shroud and speak with a man named Idriston. If any suspicious persons have crossed the border in recent days, he'd be the first to know. Yes, I am the one tasked with monitoring those who would enter our lands by way of Corthus. Hmm? An Ishgardian knight clad in black armor. No, I recall nothing of the sort. And such a striking visitor would be difficult to forget. My apologies, friend. I can only suggest that you return to Logdrenal. Log. Log. Logdrenal? I don't know. And see if he has any other theories. I'm glad I came here. That is a thing I'm happy I did. Chocobo butt. No luck, you say? Most curious. Why, it is nigh impossible that a fugitive can make it this far without being espied from Floritanil's spire. Which leaves the possibility that your man is still in Ishgard. It runs counter to good sense. Why would a fugitive not want to put a distance of grounds between him and his pursuers? But by the process of deduction, it is a possibility. The climbs of Ishgard are not kind to drifters and vagabonds. That said, there has been talk of curious smoke wafting from a cave east of here at night. Were I you, I might begin my search there. Ishgard. Mm, no, not quite. That Ishgard would resort to sending a coin starved adventurers after me. I know not whether to laugh or feel insulted. The, the eye! It rouses? For another? Preposterous. That is not Estinian. Oh well. Our paths so shall cross again. You can be sure of it. I hope so, because, uh, yeah, I need to work on that voice.
Dragoon clad in black, you say? Tell me that all tell me all that transpired. By the fury that I would choose another. I had not thought it possible. In light of recent events, it would seem an explanation is in order. The eye is no ordinary relic. It harbors the power of the dragon, which it bestows upon a single chosen soul, the strongest and wisest dragoon. He who is chosen is possessed of the power to fight our mortal foes, the dragons of Dravania, on equal footing, soaring in the firmament as if it were an extension of the land. That man is known as the Azure Dragoon. The Azure Dragoon is the light of hope for all Ishgardians, and the paragon of all dragoons. For this reason, you may imagine how it pains me to have to confess that the man you encountered, the thief, is no, none other than the Azure Dragoon, and that I was once his teacher. Needless to say, I acknowledge myself a cannibal for Estinian's misdeeds, and mean to do all of my power to find him and recover the Eye, but I cannot do this alone. I require your help, Raid, you, who have received the power of the dragon. You may labor to believe it, but there can be mo no mistake. The soul of the dragoon I bear glows in your presence, irrefutable proof that you are chosen. What I can ill explain, however, is the why of it. Never before in Ishgar's long history has the eye roused to more than one individual in a single generation, but avails us not to cudgel our brains about it. The fact of the matter is, is that you are now a vessel for the power of the dragon. That dragon lies yet in slumber, however, and you must needs possess the means to wake it, the soul of the dragoon. I would entrust you with mine, Raid. Like Astinian, I once ruled the skies as the Azure Dragoon, although that power has since become lost to me. It was simply by force of habit that I have hitherto kept the soul upon my person. I have no inkling as to why the Eye has seen fit to choose a second, and an outsider at that. Yet one thing is clear, none can challenge the Azure Dragoon and conceivably prevail save another Azure Dragoon. You are our only hope for br uh, bringing Estinian to justice and reclaiming the Eye. Of course, I do not ask that you do this unaided. I may be a dragoon no more, but what knowledge I have, I shall gladly impart to you. For indeed, when the time comes that you must face the Azure Dragoon, not less than complete mastery of the power of the dragon will avail you. That per perilous road lies ahead of you, I shall not deny. Knowing this, if you would still lend me your lance, I will teach you to harness the power that has chosen you. Go forth, my young dragoon, and rouse the dragon within. I look forward to your return. Your inner dragon grows stronger. Lance of Fury, Sir Albrick would have you undertake a trial. It is pleasing to see how readily the dragon stirs within you. You show great potential, Raid. A potential that may well prove the difference between victory and defeat. Estinian is no ordinary dragoon. Even when set against the legendary azures of ages past, the man is considered second to none. Such as his prowess, in fact, that the day he was chosen by the Eye, it was proclaimed that Haldreth the Dragon's Eye had been reborn. I mean not to disparage your skills, Raid, but to pursue Estinian in your current state would be tantamount to suicide. As promised, I shall train you in the way of the Dragoon, that you might face Estinian as an equal. Before we commence, however, it is only fitting that you are edified regarding our origins. It all began in a millennium past, when our forebearers resided in the southern plains in humble circumstances. The Fury, impressed by the spirit of our ancestors, decided it was meet that she make them her own. So did she appear before Haldreth's sire, a man of courage and integrity named Thordan, and bade him to lead her people to the Promised Land, to what would become the great nation of Ishgard. 
Their journey brought them to a wide chasm, whereupon Thordin and his people set to building a bridge. It was then that a dark shadow descended upon them, the great worm Nidhogg. Heedless of his own safety, Thordin fiercely, fearlessly charged at the colossal beast. Alas, he was pushed into the chasm by one of his own, a man seduced by the worm, and fell to his death. Taking up his slain sire's lance, Haldreth hurled himself at Nidhogg, even as tears streamed down from his face. The confrontation ended when the young man, his hand guided by Halone, landed a mighty thrust that prized out Nidhogg's eye. With that terrible roar, with a terrible roar of pain, the great worm took wing and fled, while jubilation reigned below. Ishgard's priceless relic is none other than the eye taken from Nidhogg, the that day. It is, variable, it is a variable wellspring of dragon power. Even so removed from its owner, it can exert control over the hearts of men. Haldriff himself felt its malign influence, but his love of justice brooked no corruption, and he prevailed over the power, claiming it for his own. And so it was that the first Azure Dragoon was born. Being derived from our foe, the power of the dragon is a, is a th thing to be loathed. But as Haldreth proved to us all, so long as our hearts burn with justice, we need not fear being taken in its thrall. Ah, but what is justice precisely? Justice assumes many shapes and forms, Raid, and none can say that one is greater than another. So long as you hold fast to your beliefs and stay true to yourself, you have no room for the power of the dragon to master you. But enough of history. Let us return our attention to the present. A knight by the name of Sir... Bruce Mont will see to your next stage of your training. Seek him out at R Witch Drop. Oh, 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 oh. And move that. Move that thing right there. seeks to become a dragoon. Ha! Sir Albrecht speaks of legends and chosen ones, but I would see you prove yourself in a more pr practical fashion. With your lance. Defend yourself! Some skill, I will give you that, and the glow of your soul crystal. Perhaps Sir Albrecht was not wrong about you after all. Now return to him. Your training here is complete. I'm not walking my whole way, my way up. No, 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 not doing that. Little history, Witch Drop used to be a point of contention with some adventurers. Uh, people kind of kept dropping into it on accident. <laughs> Oh, I can probably slay it now. There we go. So the dragon grows ever stronger within you, Raid. Clearly, your trial was a rousing success. I need only observe your crystal to know as much. 
Yes, though you have only just begun to walk the path of the Dragoon, it is clear that you possess the talent to become Stinian's equal. Go forth and make the powers you have attained your own. When the time is right, we shall proceed with your training. Your inner dragon grows stronger. Just weird, and I never noticed. It's just do it on the roof. Anyway. Unfading skies. So Albrecht would send you to your on your next trial. You grow ever stronger, and I speak of more than just the flesh. Aye, you are slowly but surely realizing your potential as an Azure Dragoon. It is heartening to look upon Oh, sorry. It is heartening to look upon, though I must confess that my presiding feeling is one of relief. You must understand, the mere thought that the eye would choose an outsider, one who ill comprehends the threat posed by dragons, filled me with the gravest of misgivings. Yet you have... Ah, uh, uh, but I shall say no more, lest flattery impede your improvement. Now, during our last lesson, I enlightened you regarding the origins of dragoons. You will now you will recall how Haldreth heroically triumphed over the great worm Nidhogg and Ishgard came into possession of the Eye. Tell me, Ray, do you believe that these events truly transpired, or are you inclined to think them fairy tales? I ask you this because few folk have seen dragons in the flesh besides we Ishgardians, and most would soon dismiss them as product, products of the imagination. Alas, dragons are no less real than you and I, with Nidhogg perhaps being the most real of all. In the course of its history, Ishgard has suffered the creature's wrath on eight separate occasions. Each time the great worm, worm rouses, the blood of countless Ishgardians is spilled. Let us visit, revisit the past once more, Raid. The time is twenty summers past, and the place is the place Dravania. After a century in slumber, Nidhogg awakened once more to resume his reign of terror. Entire villages were razed to the ground, their inhabitants reduced to smoldering ash. Sensing the great worm's unbridled rage, others of his kind began to rouse, and in such numbers as to blot out the sun with their wings. A deep foreboding darkness swept over Ishgard. Raging infernos painting the belly of the sky in angry red, the agonized screams of ancient innocence fading into deathly silence. In my station as the Azure Dragoon, I was there through it all, bore witness to all the horrors. But there was no time to offer even a silent prayer. Nudhog lingered in one place only long enough to lay it to waste, and when he took wing, so did I pursue him, a man possessed. This game of cat and mouse continued for what seemed an eternity before I found myself face to face with the great worm. The battle unfolded in a tiny settlement on the edge of Corthus. Raging on for three days and three nights, with neither side able to gain a decisive advantage. Remaining on my feet by sheer force of will, I realized that it must end now, else it shouldn't end well. Marshalling my last arms of strength, I wagered all on a single thrust. My lance struck home, burying deep in the ruin of my opponent's empty eye socket. Yet before I could withdraw my weapon, the worm lashed out wildly in agony, dealing a blow that left me sprawled upon the scorched earth, nigh insensate. In that instant, I thought myself surely doomed. The Halone was not finished with me. Having lost the taste for battle, Nidhogg let loose a blood-curdling roar before fleeing to the sky. The battle was over. While I did not perish from my injuries, they rendered my body unfit to bear the power of the dragon and I was as the Azure Dragoon no more. Lying bedridden, my thoughts wandered to all the innocent lives that had been lost, the people I had failed to protect. The last conflict with the dragons of Dravania left countless orphans in its wake. Astinian is one of them, the sole survivor of Ferndale, the final village to suffer Nidhogg's wrath. With none left to care for him, I did the only thing I could. I took Astinian as my own son, instructing him in the way of the Dragoon where he, when he was of an age to learn. Yet I would not have you think me noble. My actions were born not of compassion, but of guilt. My guilt at having failed him. 
But alas, I have also failed him as a father. For what manner of man did I bring him up to be? A thief who would endanger the life of every one of his countrymen. Aye, you heard me right. All of Ishgar may suffer for his crime. Though we know little and less of the minds of dragons, it is conceivable that the disturbance surrounding his stolen eye will rouse Nadog to awaken once more. That his kin have already stirred from their slumber serves as fair warning of that. Time is not on our side. Fortunately, it would seem you are more than ready to embark on your next trial. Make your way to the Witch Drop, where the knight... His... Uh, Hustain? Hustain? I don't know. Awaits your arrival. My nation is depending on you, Raid. Back to the Witch Drop! Woo! being assaulted by uh, chorus and organs. Once again, I will not be going all the way around. You're the one who would aspire to be an Azure Dragoon? Why, you're not even a Vish God. If you truly possess the power that Sir Albrecht sees in you, then prove it to me with your lance. A God! Spurters. Strength! I have not seen its set light since Stinian himself stood before me. Mayhaps Sir Albrecht has the right of it, after all. Return to show your crystal to him. I have no doubt he will be pleased. Anyway. Again, I am not going all the way around to get up and back up. That's... Ooh, not gonna happen. And... yeah. Okay. I have fallen and uh, climbed out of the witch drop more times than I care to f uh, to recount. I'm not doing it anymore. You have passed yet another trial of flying colors, Raid. The day when you may stand before Astinian as an equal is not far off. And when that day comes, I will choose you over the traitor. I have no doubt at this. But we must be patient still. For now, you must continue your training. When you can do no more on your own, seek me out once more. Double Dragoon, Sir Albrick has been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Impeccable timing, Raid. A message arrived from Instinian but moments ago, much to my astonishment. He would trade words with us and bids us meet him at Boulder Downs. 
As his true intentions, I cannot say. It may well be a trap, but we must go nonetheless. I trust I can count on, upon your company. Okay, I'll try it. Let's try this again. Greetings, Master. It has been too long. That's not good, Estinian. I'm going with it. Estinian, in this fall at once. You must know that each second the eye passes outside Ishgard's walls, bringing us closer to a repeat of the tragedy of twenty summers past. Surrender yourself in the eye and return with me to Ishgard before it's too late. Ah. But it is already too late, Master. For you see, Nidhogg has already awakened. What? Hear me, Master. You have mistaken the cause of the dragon's return. The eye is not to blame. A premonition came to me by virtue of the dragon within, warning me that the great worm would soon rouse. Even as he slumbered, Nudhog seed with irrepressible rancor for that wound of twenty years ago. The rancor will send him flying as a speeding arrow to Ishgard, whereupon death and devastation will ensue. But there is a possible solution. Were the eye taken to a remote land, far from the Holy See, then, and only then, could destruction be averted and the lives of innocent Ishgardians be spared. You, you mean to take the bait of yourself? Nay, there's more to this than you let on. You seek vengeance for Ferndale. To me, the two are one and the same. You know my past, past better than anyone else. It was for no other reason than to avenge my family that I became a dragoon. Dragons long or outlive men and do not soon forget the wrongs done to them. What grudge they harbor burns as fire in their hearts, over time swelling into unquenchable inferno. You need only look back on history to see that Nidhogg grows stronger with each awakening. When last he darkened our skies, the Great Worm came with a hair's breadth of laying waste to Ishgard. Not short of death will prevent him from completing his mission the next he wakes. Nidhogg took everything from me. Now I shall take everything from him, if it, it, it means my life. The eye works in ways men can ill comprehend, but this much is plain. In choosing two azure dragoons in one generation, it means for us to join together in common cause. Adventure. You have heard my resolution. Now I ask you to lend me your power. I, the power of the dragon. In the long and proud history of Ishgard, never before have two azure dragoons risen in the same era to fight as one. This is our best, nay, our only chance to send the great worm to eternal slumber. Behold my armor. This is Drakenmail, 
forged in the lifeblood of dragons. As blood calls to blood, so too does the armor call to the dragon within, redoubling the wearer's strength thereby. If you would realize your potential as an azure dragoon, you must needs clad yourself in the same. Clad so, you will inherit the technique passed from azure dragoon to azure dragoon, down through the generations. Then, and only then, will your training be complete. But first, you must win the Dragon Mill as I and Sir Albrecht did before you, by proving yourself worthy in the ultimate trial of the Azure, a se series of battles so harrowing as to send the unworthy to an early demise. Master, once the adventurer acquires the armor, pray see to it that he learns to harness the power of the dragon in full. Astidian, wait! Save your ways. I do not mean to make myself easy prey for dragons. I take my leave of you. Estinian. For forgive me, I was deep in thought. Now then, as to acquiring the army armor of Estinian spoke. At first, it was my intention to bequeath mine own armor to you. I am an azure dragoon no longer, and its powers are wasted on me. It would be a simple enough. To, it would be simple enough to hand it over to you and complete your training right here now. But it is as Estinian said: the dragon armor is no ordinary set of mail. Its strength derives from the dragon blood whence it came, the blood's power resonating with the soul of the wearer. Though I can no longer draw upon mine own armor's power, it, its bond to me was forged years ago. Were I to bestow it upon you now, I fear it would only offer but a skint skintler of the protection it afforded me in those bygone days. I, Stinian, has the right of it. You must claim your armor as he and I did before you. You must complete the trials of the Azure, that the powers of the dragon blood be yours and yours alone. The ogre's belly will be where your your final test begins. I shall dispatch Sir Bruce Mont there. Seek him out upon your arrival. See what I mean? See? I'm telling you. You have grown strong since we last met, Aventura, but you pale in comparison with your Azure forebearers. It would prove me if you would prove me wrong, let your lance do the talking.
Once again, adventure, you prove yourself worthy beyond my expectations. Take this, but know that your trial has only just begun. Your next challenge lies in the chamber beyond. Sir, Sir Hestinin waits you with there. I don't know. I can't say these names. You, a foreigner, would don the dragon armor that proved to us you will not do it dishonor. Sir Albrecht said the eye had chosen you, and it would appear he speaks true. The armor is yours, wet with pride and honor. Your trial is nigh complete, but be forewarned. Many before you have made it this far, only to fall at the final challenge. Do not let overconfidence be your downfall. So you've made it this far. Very well. Prove yourself worthy of the Azure, or die in the effort. You have demonstrated your powers to me beyond a doubt. Aye, there's not an Iskardian who would gainsay your right to don the armor of dragons. I shall send word ahead to Sir Albrecht that you have passed your trials here. It is he who will present you with the fourth piece of the armor and consummate your training. Go now, my fellow dragoon, and deliver this land from the Great Worm's wrath. Once again, I am flying out of here because... that. Sorry. Distracted. I hear from Sir Bruce Mont that you performed most impressively. Yes, I stand more convinced than ever that you will be the one who to save our land. It be warned, Raid, one last trial awaits you. You will face this trial in the presence not of knights, but of ghosts. Make your way toward the Steel Vigil and seek out a gravestone north and west of that structure. Take with you this flute, and when you reach your destination, blow a single strong note. A visitor shall soon arrive. Entertain your guest, and should he leave behind a present, return it here to me. And back up we go.
Oh, ouais, ouais. Fiddling, I'm due. It probably wouldn't faster to walk. Yeah, whatever. Your presence before me indicates you have seen to the visitor. Have you aught to show for your deeds? Draconian flute. The shrill tone emitted by this bone card whistle is believed to summon minions of the Dravanian Dra horde. Horde skull. Proof you, or someone else, slew Grey Wine. Ah, the skull of Grey Wine, old warrior of the Dravonian horde. It is said that in ages past he could bring down a castle with a single breath. His strength has dwindled since those days, but a dragon past his prime is a formidable foe nonetheless. In slaying him, you have proven yourself worthy of this. You now possess four pieces of the armor that Istinian, myself, and our forebears did wear. While you doubtless wonder about the fifth, I can tell you only that it is not mine to give. Fear not, however. Your triumphs in the trials and against a dragon of the horde give evidence that dragon blood now resonates with yours. Yes, you stand before me as prepared for your ultimate challenge as any could be. And yet, before we proceed, I would hear it from your own lips. The Great Worm's power is the stuff of legends. Have you truly resolved to fight this battle? To risk your own life to deliver a foreign land from the clutches of its ancient foe? When you are certain that your mind is settled, return and speak to me. Fatal Seduction. Sir Albrick would ask you to reaffirm your commitment to do battle with the Great Worm. So you would join your strength to Estidians, that Eshgard may be free from the rage of the Great Worm forevermore. And I shall honor my promise. You shall have full use of your powers by the time we are done. Before we begin, there is something that I must needs confess. You might will recall the tale of my battle with Nidhogg twenty years past, and how the power of the dragon left me on account of the injuries I sustained. What I said was an untruth. The power did not abandon me, Raid. It was I who abandoned it. Being derived from our mortal enemies, the power of the Azure Dragoon is a double-edged sword. Even as it lends us strength, we need to smite dragons. It heightens our communion with the creatures, rendering our minds more susceptible to their seduction than ordinary men. Even as I buried my lance in Nidhogg's flesh, our gazes locked, and mine eyes met with then with a look that would fair and pale a man. In that instant, I found myself assailed by a torrent of emotions not my own. Sorrow, rancor, pity. They threatened to drown out the man and me and leave me behind a dragon. Fearing that I might turn traitor, I chose to purge myself of the power that the eye had bestowed upon me. Thus regaining lucidity, I was able to rout the grievously wounded Nidhogg. Alas, countless of his brethren yet remained. As, to, as if to mock me, they fell upon Ferndale with a vengeance. Bereft of my power, it was all I could do to save but one child. Nereus so knows of this. 
Nay, not even Estinian. But I can keep him in the dark no longer. At our last meeting, Estinian said that protecting Ishgard and exacting revenge upon Nidhogg are as one to him. That, that frame of mind, however, may lead to his demise. The desire to protect and the desire to avenge are opposing forces that can ill be reconciled. Worse, the latter serves only to cloud his sense of self. When next Estinian and I meet, I intend to confess all. Though it means the loss of his good opinion, the outcome of the coming battle and his very life may well depend upon his readiness to relinquish his powers. Never allow yourself to forget the origin of your strength. Ever does the dragon look behind your eyes, biding its time, ready to claim you for its own. Or less than complete conviction, and you will find yourself in its vice-like clutches. So forewarned, let us return to our present endeavor. My promise to Estinian was that I would impart unto you the technique that will mark you as a true Azure Dragoon. If you would know the truth, however, this knowledge is not within my power but to bestow. No, you must claim the technique much as you claim the fourth piece of the armor you bear, by proving yourself in battle with the dragons whose power you would untie, you unite with your own. I entrust you with this flute once more. Take it to the southwest of Providence Point and blow a single note. By locking wills with your adversary and prevailing, you will prove yourself worthy to champion the cause to which your lance is sworn. The dragon within you shall then awaken. Oh, fine. Ugh. Up and down, up and down the map. Ugh. South. We yep. It is good to see you safely returned. I take from your bearing that the engagement went favorably. Draconian flute. Uh, yeah, I did that one. You left this place as a man raid, but you return as a dragon. There is no more for me to teach you. From here, your battle is yours and yours alone. Now, you might recall me saying that the fifth and final piece of the dragon armor was not, my, not mine to give. However, that is not wholly true. I, I could guide you in the direction of that which you seek. That said, I yet have reservations. The sheer power of the dragon house within such a great many of your azure forebears, myself among them, have proven hopelessly incapable of wielding it. I do not doubt what I see. I, within you, has awakened a strength that forever eluded the likes of me. If you are not worthy of wearing the armor, then I non know none who are. Remember my warning to you, Raid, and heed it well. Nidhogg is a lord amongst his among his kind. Art less than complete conviction, and you will surely fall under his thrall. 
Before you can master your foe, you must needs master yourself. Hone your lance arm till you can bear it no further honing, and present yourself to me. When the time is come, I will tell you what you need to know. I look forward to our next meeting, my young dragoon. Guess that was level 45 quest. Oh well. So I did it early. I put the armor on early. Oh well. I'm... It doesn't look right with... The... Is that... It has the... Yeah, I'm sure it does. There we go. That looks better. Anyway. Into the Dragon's Maw. Sir Albrecht wears a solemn expression on his face. Ah, Raid. An urgent message arrived from Estinian in your absence. He bids you come at once to the Steel Vigil. It would seem Nidhogg is on the move, and rather sooner than we had anticipated. It appears that you have not yet fully become master of the dragon within you, and yet we are racing against time. I fear we have no choice but to do battle to the best of your current abilities, and without the dragon mail I promised. Now let us away. Estinian must know the truth of Ferndale, lest he fall for the Great Worm's seduction. One more time. Albrecht, I have waited long for this day. You who fancy yourself an Azure Dragoon, the man whose cause you have taken up for your own is a coward. He relinquished the power of the dragon of his own volition and watched as Ferndale burned. Do you not think it ironic that I was chosen as Azure Dragoon? I, an orphan who had not a value to protect in Ishgard. I suppose I must give thanks, for it was the eye that revealed to me the truth, a truth so damning as to undo a lifetime of trust. I loved you as a father, but I can ill forgive you for Ferndale. As I understand it, you've kept even the Archbishop in the dark regarding the missing eye. Do you mean to take your shame to your grave? But I waste my breath. Prepare yourself, old man, for I shall lay waste to all the things you hold dear. And once I'm finished with you, I shall do what no Azure Dragoon has succeeded in doing. I shall claim Nidhogg's head! Calm yourself, Estinian. Your rage renders you vulnerable to the dragon's influence. Raid. In you I thought I found kindred, 
Someone beside whom I could fight the Great Worm. It is with heavy heart that I relinquish that dream. Your affection for this coward has rendered you deaf to your own destiny. Very well. That we would one day cross lances was inevitable from the moment of our first meeting. As we shall now find out who the, is the eye's true chosen. There can be only one! I am the eye's true chosen, and you shall know it when I bury my lance in your chest! Estinian, stop this madness! You and Raid were meant to be allies, not enemies! Estinian is consumed by the dragon's curse. <coughs> Dragon within you surges. You feel your wounds knitting. Ah, yes, the power of the eye. They cannot compare to mine own. You have awakened the dragon raid. Now my flames shall consume you whole! Dragon's curse corrupts Astinian's very body and soul. Power! I must have more power! Oh, Lord of Dragons, grant me strength to raise thine enemies! Astinian, surrender not to the beast within! Have you forgotten the oaths you swore? Hail! Feeble creature, dost thou desire power? Look to thine anger and to thy hatred. It is there that thou shalt find it. O mighty Nidhogg, Lord of Dragons! Grant unto me thy blood, that I might be granted the claws and things wherewith to rid thine enemies. Great. This is impossible! It cannot be! Forgive me, Estinian. I have failed you once again. I am fine, Raid. Somewhat shaken, but otherwise whole of body. Suffice it to say, I have much to reflect upon. Let us return to the observatorium. The soul of the dragon shines with unbound radiance.
Uh, south one more time. Up and down, up and down the map. I suppose it's no worse than having to travel to a bunch of different areas, but uh, I don't know. Don't know. I mean, it makes sense that it all takes place in Ishgard, because back in ARR times, this was the only Ishgard zone you could get to, so I don't care about it. I'm just going to fly. I'm tired. I suppose I've got the, actually the same land speed in this area, but eh, I don't know. Whatever. When the Bean of Darkness closed upon us, you appeared to me the spitting image of Haldreth the Dragon's Eye, just as he is depicted in the Holy Scriptures. I thought that mayhap the years have taken their toll on my mind, but behold, the soul of the Dragoon shines as it never did in all the years I bore it. It would seem you have achieved that which was thought impossible. You have awakened to the ability that none but the first Azure Dragoon possessed. Truly a momentous achievement. I can still scarce believe to be believe that you are able to summon the selfsame dragon mail worn by Haldreth to think it had been sealed within the soul crystal all this time. I have borne witness to many and more wonders over the years, yet none compares to you, my young dragoon. Could it be that your <clears throat> not ma mock not my mutterings? I am certain that it was your indomitable sense of justice that resonated with the spirit of the first Azure Dragoon, prompting him to bestow the armor upon you. Yes, that is doubtless, doubtless what happened. As the being of darkness faded, so too did Nidhogg's aura subside, and now his kind have ceased their stirring. Whether this was compelled by your awakening, I cannot say. I suspect we will learn the truth of it eventually. Estinian, my dear boy... Whatever becomes of him, he will ever be a son to me. I pray that he is somewhere out there still, and that he has not wholly forgotten the great man he once was. When that darkness brushed against me, the selfsame torrent of emotion swept over me though, as those I had experienced twenty summers past. But there was something else besides. There was a voice, and it lamented the rift that divides dragons and men. You will come to comprehend which I speak in due time. Till then, Raid, I pray that you will never use your newfound strength. Er, that you will use your newfound strength in the name of justice. Your inner dragon grows stronger.